Tuna is one of those things where it's the most riskiest business. You can make a lot of money in some instances, you can lose a lot of money. Tuna is based on trust. In order for us to source the best quality tuna, we always have to be honest with who we buy from. Otherwise, you know, why would they want to sell to us? Fridays are really busy because Friday is where we do about a third of our business for the week. So probably by a little after 3 a.m., we start cutting our first tuna. Tuna is very difficult because every fish is different from coloring to texture to fat content. So on some days we have to keep cutting and cutting and cutting until we find the right ones because obviously quality is more important than anything else because we obviously have a reputation on the line. Two Tonton Kitchen. One case, three piece, 1416. Hi, my name is Nobu Yamanashi. I'm a director of Yama Seafood. We're here in Jersey City, New Jersey. There's many different kinds of fish in the world, but tuna is definitely our core business. It can really make or break a week for us. Sushi is our main clientele, sushi restaurants, but we provide tuna to you know, various different types of cuisines from three Michelin star restaurants to you know, poke takeout restaurants. My father's name is Kingo Yamanashi. He came to the States when he was 22 years old, heard about Wild Boston Bluefin tuna that was just kind of being tossed back into the waters because it was just sports fishing. And he just offered them a dollar a pound, load up the van, come back to New York, show the chefs, hey, this is what I have, you know, cut it down yourself and take whatever cut you want. We handle four kinds of tuna, right? Albacore, big eye, yellowfin, bluefin. All yellowfin and big eye tuna are wild. Currently, bluefin tuna is 95% farmed because it's the wild bluefin season's over. You can get it from South America, you can, you can get it from you know, Brazil, pretty much any, anywhere in the world. You know, where, wherever there's good tuna, we'll find it and we'll buy it. Morning. My routine is check to make sure I didn't miss any orders from my customers and then start packing in the, uh, the local fish department. Bond Street Euro 4 Ps, 6 7, scale, head off, head deli. Funny 2, 3 4 size, and uh, Hirame 2, 4 pound up. PR is like Aya. Masa AD Euro 4 Ps. Masa AD Euro 4 Ps. Hi. This is our Sangyo section, which is our Japanese fish. We import fish from Japan. Uh, this is where we do our Hokkaido uni, you got your Shimaji Madai, all your uh, wild exotic fish. This is how they come from Japan. Wild bluefin tuna from uh, Miyazaki. He literally told me, I don't care about price, I'll pay up to $250 a pound, just give me the best thing. So he made me sort from the best tuna vendor in Toyosu in Japan, Yamayuki, and that's what it is. This is how it came out a week later. So this is where we handle all of our salmon. You know, it's all over here. We sell thousands and thousands of pounds a week. Since there's so many varieties, every chef has their preferences. Especially king salmon, they'll say give me or a king salmon or give me baka frost from, from the Faroe Islands. So this is our scale machine. So you know you put a fish through it and it descales the salmon or any kind of fish. In a day we probably go through like almost 100 pounds just worth of scales alone. So we have all of our uni. We have a direct relationship with the uh, uni processor in Hokkaido, which is pretty rare because most people have to buy it from the market. You know we sell. I think uh, two, two to three hundred trays a week. These are different brand. One of our high-end Korean restaurants are using Ogawa brand. It's covered by the start salt water, so it's it's not treated with any chemicals. It's all pretty much as natural as cracking the uni open itself. Live soft shell crab. These are shiso leaves, right? Oba, fresh wasabi roots from Japan that we wrap up. Uh, That's Lewis. He's been with us for Lucha, what? Fifteen years? Fifteen years? Yeah. Almost. Oh, 16, young guy. He's been uh, managing our shellfish department, so he's doing quality control. He's listening the sound of the oyster to see if it's still alive or not. So tuna is something that we built our business off of. My father started it you know, from nothing in 40, 50 years ago. So this is our tuna room. How many tuna orders do we do on a Friday? Friday? How many restaurants? How many restaurants? Yeah, on a Friday. Probably 250. Yeah, 250. Masakazu Ito is uh, our tuna manager, tuna buyer. He's been with the department for probably 15 years now. He's been our uh, core in making sure that Yama Seafood name remains for the tuna side. 
We moved through around 8,000 pounds of tuna. And I gotta have everything ready by 7 o'clock. The local big guys around here, they're my favorite is because uh, the boats, they only go out for probably a week. The other countries, they go out for like a month. If they go out for like a week, then it's pretty fresh. This fish has good color. This one, on the other hand, is a little pale. This one is really pale, no fat. I'm kind of disappointed by this fish. So I only got one good fish out of three. So basically, uh, they're gonna flip the, the coffin. That's like no joke, that's just like it's what not, you guys that, call it. That's what we call. So when I asked the vendor how many coffins am I getting, you know, they'll be like, yeah, four coffins. <laughs> Under the ice is thousands and thousands of pounds of tuna over here. The cutting table is here. We have a butcher that breaks down the tuna into four loins, two bellies, two backside. And then we have a trimmer that cleans it up nicely to make it look professional. The trimmers end up weighing it, hand writes the weight on it, and then lays it on the table. The table here is where our best fish of the day is. Along the back is where it's maybe lesser quality per se, or your number twos or your poke quality. You know, we pretty much only buy number one tuna, whether it be yellowfin or big eye, but we cut it, it wasn't necessarily the quality that was that we paid for number one. So those maybe we sell to our number two customer, uh, poke customers. After we line them up, my job to allocate all the, the tunas, depending on how much they pay. This is the, the Michelin uh, three-star restaurant, the Bar Nadine. They like the 10 to 15 pound tuna loin. So I'm, I'm gonna give these two belly loins. The sushi restaurant likes fatty fish, but French, you know, they don't like fatty fish. You know, they like green fish with good colors. So that's what I'm looking for. So I got a order for restaurant Danielle in New York, and I'm going to give him the belly piece. He doesn't like the tail part. So I basically I cut, I cut the tail off, and I'm giving him 14.8 pounds. You know, the best farm bluefin tuna is from Spain. The Spain bluefin tuna are called jumbo bluefin, anywhere from 400 pounds to mid 500s. We try not to go too big just because you know, that's not a quality that we believe is in best interest of our clients. Because if it gets too big, it's, it's too fatty and it's just, it just doesn't taste as good. Okay, this is a farm raised uh, bluefin from Spain. Uh, it weighs 430 pounds. This tuna is for six restaurants. Oh, the samurai in the house. This is uh, the tuna knife. I think it cost around $5,000. This is really sharp. Basically, this is the, the Spanish bluefin. So I'm gonna cut it in two blocks. So basically, uh, we're gonna saku these blocks into pieces, and then uh, we're gonna uh, deep freeze in a glass freezer. So saku is when, after we break down the whole tuna, take the skin off, take the bones out, and cut it into blocks, saku blocks, and you can just cut it into sushi or nigiri. You know, if you use a regular freezer, then it's not gonna work. As long as you uh, thaw it the right way, you're not gonna see the difference between the fresh and the frozen. So this is where we do a lot of our azucari. You know, this is our customer out in Charleston, Ridgewood, New York. Throw all these together, probably three, 4,000 pounds worth of azucari. And plus like super frozen products that we're trying to sell in the future as well. Other smaller distributors don't have the the facility like this where they can keep anything like this. They may not even have a super freezer, they, or they may have one chest freezer that they hold a little bit. Azukari is a Japanese term where we keep, we hold the items for our customers. You know, we make sure our customers can provide the best tuna all throughout the year, during the off season. It's not like we're, we're a freezer storage facility where we charge a dollar, a dollar a pound a month or something. This is something that we do for our customers, but obviously we can't offer it to everybody as well. And inside here we have 
eight to 10 chest freezers that are kept at, it says minus 78 right there. They, they draw a diagram or, you know, even better, some of them even come here and they say, I want you to cut it exactly this way because that's how it works for them. If we do it whatever our way, it doesn't necessarily work for them. So each Azucar we do has to be carefully um, explained and executed. Otherwise, it won't be up to the standards of our customers. Drivers start coming in soon and then they just pick it out, double check everything and load the vans with it. Our whole process is very important, you know, especially drivers as well, because there are eyes and ears outside of our facility. And obviously, you know, they're the ones that do the last check. So if any mistake that's made in the warehouse, they're the ones that can catch it and resolve it. So before it goes out, they double check everything. And if there's any issues, we fix it before they go out. Yeah, there's only a few rules that my father really wanted people ingrained in their brains. When you come in in the morning, you know, make sure everyone hears you say good morning. If you can't do it here as mentality, you can't do it out there when you're doing deliveries, but no one's watching you, right? And never steal and don't cheat. But yeah, he always said, you know, he may not be smarter than everyone, but he'll work longer and harder than anybody. He'll be in first thing in the morning before anybody, and he'll be the last one out. Very old school mentality, and he lived by that. He doesn't care how skilled you are, how smart you are. It doesn't matter. To him, he wants loyal, hardworking people that will never lie, cheat, or steal from him. Those are the people that are still here today that are loyal to him and will retire and have this job for 30, 40 years.